In this video, I'm going to be explaining what ear and seer ratings mean. I'm going to explain how these ratings are calculated, and I'm going to give you practical feedback on how you can use this information to pick the best air conditioning system for your home. And if you're tuning in for the first time, at the end of this video, there will be a link to another video about one of our favorite air conditioners, the Daikin Fit. And at the end of this video, we'll talk about why, even though it's more efficient and will 100% without a doubt save you money on your energy bill, it still has a lower EER rating than most basic 13 seer builders grade air conditioners. So first off, let's talk about what these acronyms mean and how they're calculated. Now, EER rating stands for energy efficiency ratio and is a measurement of a unit's energy efficiency throughout the year. SEER rating, on the other hand, stands for seasonal energy efficiency ratio. And this rating is a measurement of a system's efficiency during the hottest times of the year or peak season. Now, the way that EER or energy efficiency ratio is calculated is simply taking the total BTU output and dividing it in watts consume. For example, if you have a 10,000 BTU air conditioner that consumes 1,000 watts, that would have an EER rating of 10. And the reason this is important is because there's a flaw in this calculation and rating system that we'll talk about more later in this video. SEER rating, on the other hand, is calculated by dividing the unit's total cooling output during a typical cooling season and dividing it by the total electric energy input during that same time period. Now, although an EER rating is simply a snapshot of how much energy an air conditioner is using when it's running, a SEER rating is a much better way to gauge how efficient a system is because unfortunately the way that systems are rated by the AHRI, an acronym that stands for Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration Institute, is not an accurate reflection of how well they will actually perform in operation. So take these ratings with a grain of salt because there's one type of system that ultimately will always perform in the most efficient way possible and also produce maximum comfort and we'll touch on that in a second. But unfortunately the AHRI rating system doesn't always accurately reflect how a system will actually perform. So first off, let's talk about what type of SEER ratings you should go for based on your situation. In general, in a moderate climate where you are not running your air conditioner that often, a basic single stage 13 or 16 SEER AC is typically fine. Now, there are definitely comfort upgrades beyond that, but if you're one of these people that runs your air conditioner for one or two months out of the year, then this is probably what your contractor will recommend. However, if you live in a climate like Houston, Texas, or Phoenix, Arizona, for example, where you might run your air conditioner for seven or eight months out of the year, getting the most efficient system possible is going to be something that's not only going to pay for itself in terms of energy savings, but you're also going to benefit from some additional comfort features that these higher end systems tend to offer, which I will discuss briefly in this video, but will also be elaborated on further in the video that's linked at the end. But generally speaking, Speaking, the higher the SEER rating, the more efficient the system. Most contractors, when they're presenting bids to you, will bring up SEER rating. They're not going to even talk about EER rating. And the reason is because, as I mentioned earlier, SEER rating is a more accurate reflection of how a system will perform during peak season, which is why more contractors will reference that rating. But we'll talk about EER rating in this video because it ties into a very important consideration when it comes to replacing your HVAC, and that is tax credits and utility rebates. The only reason the EER EER rating technically holds any level of importance is because in many municipalities where utility providers will require a minimum EER rating in order to qualify for a rebate. This means that even if you're getting an extremely efficient inverter system that might have a 17 or 20 SEER rating, unfortunately it might not qualify for a rebate because the EER rating is lower. But this is not because it is not an efficient system, it is because the methodology used to calculate EER ratings is flawed and hasn't been adapted to catch up with more efficient technology that is now available on the market. And if you're enjoying the content so far, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and liking and subscribing is a free way you can show your support. Or if you don't like the video so far, you can push the dislike button too. That is perfectly acceptable. And post a comment in the comment section below. We do read all the comments and respond to them as promptly as possible. Just keep in mind, we are busy servicing and installing air conditioners throughout the summer and furnaces throughout the winter. So so we will respond as soon as we have time. Thanks for doing that. Now back to the content. And right now I'm going to dive into this a little further so you understand my point. Remember when I said earlier that EER rating is simply calculated by dividing your total BTU 
CPU output by watts of power consumed. The reason that's important is because right now the AHRI calculates EER by simply dividing max output by max power consumed. And the reason this is flawed is because newer systems like the Daikin Fit I mentioned earlier are inverters or multi-stage systems with variable speed compressors, which means that they will almost never be running at 100% capacity. Even on the hottest days of the year, they will ramp up and down throughout the day. And that is how these types of systems gain their efficiency because they are maximizing their cooling effectiveness and throttling up and down throughout the day. But because an ear rating is calculated based on a system's power consumption at 100% operating capacity, oftentimes inverters have lower EER ratings as a result. And to be 100% honest, I don't know why this is the case, but I have measured these systems, amp draws and power consumptions when they are operating and on startup, and they consume a fraction of the power that a traditional air conditioner or heat pump consumes. And the reason I point this out is because if you go out and buy a high-end three or five stage air conditioner, for example, or an inverter like the Daikin Fit I referenced earlier, which is a variable speed compressor, unfortunately, oftentimes the EER rating will still show that the system is not efficient at max capacity and therefore it will not have a very high EER rating even when compared to a single stage system or in layman's terms, it's single speed AC counterpart. So this means you could buy a 20 sear inverter air conditioner that doesn't qualify for a rebate or tax credit because of the EER rating. Meanwhile, your 13 or 14 sear AC could potentially qualify. Now, keep in mind, this is especially true on the smaller tonnages of systems because a five ton system will always have a less efficient ratio of power consumption to BTU output. But my point in bringing this up is that it is very easy to get confused when navigating this. I get confused all the time because it boggles my mind that the utility providers and federal government make it such a convoluted process to qualify for an energy rebate or tax credit. And in a lot of ways, it unfortunately disincentivizes people from putting in more efficient equipment when they learn that the high efficiency air conditioner they wanted to put in might not qualify for a rebate. My point in bringing this up is that if you stumbled upon this information during your purchasing process and you are wondering why your system won't qualify for a rebate, well, now you know. It's just another case of of bureaucratic incompetence. But in all seriousness, I just wanted to put out this video because I know a lot of people ask this question and I want you to know that you are not alone. Not only are manufacturers wondering when this will change, but contractors like myself run into this all the time and it can be very frustrating and make you think that the high efficiency system you're trying to buy must not be that efficient because if it was efficient, wouldn't it qualify for a rebate? And although I would agree with you in that logic and say, yes, that would probably make sense. Just know that you are not alone and that that is not always the case. And keep in mind that this is more true in some regions versus others. And I'm sure you'll see some contractors in the comment section below pointing out that they may or may not have had this problem with their local utility providers and the rebates they offer. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So hopefully you found this content helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And as promised, earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen right now about one of our favorite air conditioners that explains how inverter technology works and why it's more efficient. So if you haven't watched that already, please make sure you check that out and we will catch you on the next episode.